Oh, we're live. Oh, we are live. <laughs> this is great. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> wow. Well, welcome, everybody. Welcome to Jenny's page. So yeah, welcome know. to my page. Yeah, they should know Jenny. They might not know me. I'm Becky Vaness. I feel like like dancing or something. Your page is fun, Jenny. Yeah. This is Vogue, everybody move to the music. We're just dancing until people come on. Whatever, Vogue, church is in the house. Let your body go with the flow. What was the song um, you had me singing the other day? Let's talk about I, Pops, let's baby, talk but. Let's talk about Pops, baby. Let's talk about <laughs> you and me. Yeah. Of course, I was thinking sex too. So we can talk about sex, pops. Yeah. All of it. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, I see you, baby. Shaking that ass. That one. Shaking that ass. You got me crazy. That one? I know. Yeah. Hello, Shorty. Oh. oh, and Essence is here. Hi, too. Hi, darling. Hello. I love this. This is so much fun. StreamYard is so much fun. Oh, it's it's so much lighter, and I love that the dock ducks there. Hi, Jenny yeah. B. You just said hi to us. <laughs> I know it's awesome. Well, it, it's for us humanoids and X Men. It's like squirrel pop pop pop. You know, just playing. So, what are we talking about today? What would you like to talk about? We're talking about, I know it's not mine, but. But. Mm, that's the, I see you, baby, shaking that ass with the butt, shaking that ass. But. And the butt thing is like, um, oh, I know this isn't mine, but it's still there. But it's too much. But, but. it's too sore. Yeah. But and I can't take it. But it's too sore. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> well, and anytime you say but, you're also, it's, oh, I love that I have no brain right now. So that is so cool. But anytime you say but, it's like everything before the but, you just kind of negated it. You do. And it's also like something where you, yeah. So you negate that, but it's also like sitting on the fence as well. Cause you're like aware of like both sides, but you're not really choosing one or the other. So you're saying, this, but actually energetically engaged with this. Wow. And it's like, what, what's going on here? Well, thank you for that. Because, you know, um, so for me, my whole life, until I recently, too, have taken an X-Men class and I got that I'm not as messed up as I thought I was. Um, my whole life, I've been able to see all sides. So I was that person that never really took a side. Like, yes. you know how your friends always wanted you to, to like, take a side because, you know, because they did. They wanted you on their side. But I had the awareness of both sides. So I, I couldn't. I, and then so for me, I, I always made myself wrong because I thought that I couldn't choose. And I get it's more of the bill. Well, with X-Men, how many X-Men and um, by X-Men, I mean, not the label of who they are, but actually the way they function in the world. So mm. everywhere you've labeled yourself as an X-Men, everywhere you say you're not an X-Men, can we just join and create all of that? Because it's just like a way of chatting with the energetics that we can be in the yeah. world, right? Yeah. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, on any shirts, boys, meals. So yeah. basically what we're looking at is where we're aware of so much information mm. that we try and pull it in and align and agree with it or resist and react to it and put it in boxes so we can understand it. Mm. And in your case, it's like making it a B cause. So, you know, it's that B cause. So you're trying to make it into a cause so you actually fight for it or against it and create mm. conflict with it. So mm -hmm. you're actually on one side or the other side of the fence. Yeah. And how many X-Men or how many of us are aware of infinite different possibilities with that. Yeah. So we're aware of how our dad would function, aware of how our mom would function, aware of brothers or sisters, grannies, aunts, siblings, um, not siblings, peers, like anyone else would function with that. And yeah. then we get lost in all of that and thinking what's the right way and the wrong way. 
That's yeah. a really good way we to We only look have at. two options. Yeah. It's a really oh. good way. <laughs> sure, as you said, it's like being an octopus. <laughs> so basically it is, you're aware of so much and therefore what you do with that information is a whole load of stuff. Like one of them you could be, I'll push it all away and mm. then you create like a real distance between you and it saying you're not really aware of that, you're actually normal and you reside over here. And then another way that you deal with it is to fight it. Oh no, that's not right, that's right, that's right. Blah, blah, blah. And therefore you create this real conflict with it and therefore you make it real and true. So if you do have like the famous um, call I did last year was I know it's not mine, but I still have a sore big toe. And that was born out of like the fact that a pain in your body, even if it is your big toe, isn't defined by what your toe is telling you but the energy of what that's telling you. So it's not mm. about the big toe at all. It's about the fact that you'd rather choose that than actually look at what else is over here. And this is a similar thing. It's like you would rather create conflict with fighting with that energy than actually choosing to be present with it to get all of the information yeah. that you think's too much. Mm. I sort of went like this with that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm sure nobody else has ever done that. So thank you. I do it all the time. And that's part of it. It's like this tool is, is one of the first early tools that we learn. Like um, who does it belong to? There's actually two tools. There's one, who does it belong to? And then everything that isn't yours return to center with consciousness. And then it's, I know it's not mine. Um, no, is this mine? Is it someone else? Is it something, something else? That's the three sort of questions. Yeah. And there's a difference in the energetics of both of those. So they're actually two separate tools. So if you ask, truth is this mind, you get like more or less like a, a, a light or heavy answer, you know, awareness, yeah. and then you go with that. But if you ask, um, um, who does it belong to? If you're autistic, you sort of get a Google download of everyone that functions that way. And it can be a lot of information for, autistics to be be with mm -hmm. and that's where they can get lost in that because they're actually aware of like um the thousands and billions of people that past present and future have functioned like that so yeah. who does it belong to is not saying like it's um mr smith at number 22 yeah. down the road yeah. it's not his stuff it's not actually being that defined it's actually being aware of an energy of how many people function like this yeah. and what makes you buy the lie that you have to function like that too love that yeah because i think that some people get stuck with that because they're like well it's probably my mom and i don't want to return it back to her but it, you know it's really it's not this that. is so funny i love that you brought that up because like when you return to senders you're returning to the source of when it was created which doesn't mean your mom or your gran or your great gran or your great gran or your great nan, the source of when that was created, which could be trillions of years ago. Yeah. And like, is that relevant? What makes you think that that's so real, that point of view, that it would um, create dissonance with someone else? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's that realness that we buy and make it real and true that actually affects us more because we buy it as that instead of saying like, okay, this is a point of view. It's not real. What else can I do with this? What we can I change it? What we can I be more with this energy? Mm. And that really um, goes to what I love like to speak to is like being you changing the world. Some people are like, well, how can I change the world? Well, really just acknowledging one little energy and returning it to center, um, like you stop that there and then opens up spaces for so many other people. Like just being willing to do that can be such a contribution to you. Yeah into the, the future. So like I am a being you facilitator as well, but X-Men and being you are very similar to me where it's actually asking you to embrace all your capacities and your abilities with everything. And part of that is acknowledging who you are, where you're functioning from, and then what will you cut you off in favor mm -hmm. of what you made real and true in this reality. Um, and that can be very much of where we have never ever been taught how psychic we are. Yeah. I mean, we were taught at school, you must show you're working. For an X-Men who can do it like this, it's like, oh, got that formula there, next. Um, I mean, I used to finish my maths really, really quickly. Um, and people would say, you can't, 
you must be cheating, you know? <laughs> it's like, no, it just like downloaded for me. English was a struggle, but um, maths was no bother at all. Mm. And part of that information is, is like being so congruent with the energies that are present. Now we're taught to embrace that, or are we taught to be something else that we're, we're not even, it's not even relevant in our world. Because yeah, we've be something to be, else. Yeah. yeah. We're taught to be something else and to judge. Because judgment isn't in the next men's world at all. It, we don't know how to judge, but we have to learn to create that in our world so we fit in with the rest of society. Sorry, my dog's going really unconscious behind me. Can you hear him snoring? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was you passing gas. <laughs> we Dara. Oh, it's such good. a contribution. He lies down there, and then when we get to something really meaty, usually, like even on the calls as well, you'll hear him, and he's he's snoring a little bit louder and yeah. louder and louder. That's so yeah. Weird. So that that part where we actually choose to be um, aware of what's in our worlds, but choose what society says we should choose, yeah. instead of choosing what we actually could be, is what. What I'm excited about this class with you, Jenny, is that like these tools, um, like what you're talking about right now, is to actually empower you to know what you know. Yeah. Brilliant. Totally. And you're really, really, really always good at um, contributing that to everybody that you're with. Like, well, what do you know about that? What do you know? Because everything, you know, when we allow ourselves to know, obviously mm -hmm. we are the ones that uniquely have certain information that's available to us that might not be available to everybody else. You know, I, we always like to say, well, doesn't, can everybody do that? Can everybody? And recently I've been hearing, no, Becky, it's just you. And I'm like, huh? It, but you, you almost don't allow yourself to even have that. And, you know, more and more I'm stepping into, wow, huh, maybe I do have information. Yeah. And part of that awareness is like, there's something Gary said very early on for me. And he said, and Jenny, unless you be it, then no one else will perceive it. Because when you be it, it becomes something of your being. You know, it's part of you that other people can really get through when you talk about who you are and what space you are and what contribution you are. But unless you be that, no one else will even perceive it. And each single one of us has gifts upon gifts upon capacities upon capacities of what way we can be with that. Yeah. The, the, class that we're talking about just now is a two-part telecall using the tool who does it belong to but being energetically present with it in a different way so we're beginning to engage in what the tool is is what you see or return to senders with consciousness but where do you energetically still buy the lie that that has an effect on you in your world and what we're doing is getting into the energetics of that and how we fight energetically with that and usually through it, it's with pain in our body or the download of emotion from any situation that we think is ours too. And we mm. fight that or someone else's um, physical way that they are with us, which can be like a power over. And when you're aware of those energetics, it's like how much of that do you negate you in favour of that energy and make that energy real and true and more mm. and buy that as something that's real and true and instead of flipping it over and actually saying, okay, it's not true, so what way can I be with this now? Mm -hmm. And part of that is an energetic way of being the tool. And if you don't know the tool, it's who does it belong to and return to senders, everything that isn't yours, all thoughts, all feelings, all emotions and body sensations that are not yours um, with consciousness, right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, on, insurance, boys and beyonds. And that bit for me is, yeah, so the emotions part was really real to me because I had lived my life being affected by emotions all the time yeah. before access. I'm like, wow. I was horrible. I, I like. I remember my mom's friend saying to me, she's horrible. She's so a spoiled brat. Like, And I remember going into these just extreme fits of like so much all at once, like sadness and not getting my way. I don't know like how to do it. And, and I just recall then what, you know, that I, I learned to do is be the opposite. So I wouldn't even allow myself that because I had to prove that yeah. I wasn't 
you know, that I wasn't a bad kid, that I wasn't spoiled, that I, like, I wasn't all of these things. And that's, you know, still functioning from. Um, and there's two paces with that for me, because it's like, at what, at what point were you actually energetically trying to be present with it all to dissipate it as a kid? So it's like yeah. taking it all on board. I'm so sad. I'll, you know, teenagers do it. I'm so melancholy. I'll try and be yeah. so present with it and be it so the emotion goes when in actual fact you buy more of it. Mm. Wow. So there's that part, right? Wrong, good, bad, pop, and sure it spoils me on. And then the other part is exactly what you're saying. How much comfortable distance do you create to not be present with that energy? Yeah. Because you don't want to buy the lie of what the projection means. <laughs> yeah. so it's a lot of work. Everywhere. Yeah. And everywhere that energy means whatever that woman projected at you, can we just join and create all of that and unlock that? Yeah, please. Thank you. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, all gone, I'm sure, mm. spoils me on. And then from there, you can then choose, like when that energy shows up again, you can actually say, right, okay, so what am I going to choose different this time with this? Yeah. And for me, this is like, I, it, I, I've not got it perfect, guys. Wow. Well, if we're I really didn't, you know, here. This is why we're here, continually, <laughs> you know, and just really having, you know, these conversations, having these classes, like, yes, I'll have it all. I would like ease, joy, and glory is really like my target in life. And I'm grateful for this, so thank you. But this too has opened up so much in my world. I mean, it allowed me to really acknowledge how psychic I was, how much yeah. aware of other people's stuff. And now I'm at the space where I can get information coming in my world and know it's not mine. And then like three hours later, the information will show up and I was aware of that three hours ago, I've got it. Yeah. And like, as soon as you begin to acknowledge how aware you are, you can then choose to be different in the world with it. Yeah. And the more you acknowledge how psychic you are and how much this isn't affecting you, but you can affect it, there's a mm -hmm. difference. Total so difference. there's an the effect when you feel bombarded by all this stuff. And then it's like, right, oh, okay, if I didn't be affected by this, how can I affect it with an A for Apple, affect the world with me being me? Then you walk through the world, engaging the world with the world as you and allow you to sort of and like everything then parts like the red sea in front of you you're like ah yeah. you know i can walk through a, a, a airport although i haven't recently but i can walk through an airport and actually know that there's a lot of information going on and it's not mine whereas before i would feel like um and feel as the real world because my body would take it on and i would feel overwhelmed by it because my body was aware of other people's bodies and I was aware psychically of what was going on in your head. And until I had the information of them both, I couldn't like know how to deal with that. Yeah. So getting very clear on what is yours is the first space. And then really acknowledging like how psychic you are is to yeah. me the next bit. And then using the tool and see how we go with that. Yeah. And I can tell you a little side effect. You, you might just have like random bouts of laughter. There's so much joy. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> like, can I tell you, like the first couple of weeks of COVID, I went in the supermarket for the first time and I walked up to wh where I think the shelf would be for um, like just baked beans for, you know, yeah. and there was none. And I just burst into random laughter and everybody was walking by looking at me because I thought it was hysterical that there was no beans at all left on the shelf. Like, because to me, this is like crazy. Yeah. No toilet roll, no beans, and <laughs> they kind of went together. Everyone ate all the beans, so then they ran out of toilet paper. Exactly. And to me, that was the craziness. It's just like you know, there was this thing in the world that when push comes to shove and the world's dying, then you buy toilet paper and you you buy beans and tins. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Yay. Well, oh my goodness. So we have um, the class. I have it right here. I was like pulling it up. Oh, yeah, it's a two-part telecall. I actually did a free Facebook Live in this, a Facebook oh. Live, a free Zoom in this last year. And it created so much change in people's worlds when they began to ask the questions and I began to answer them and actually show people energetically how to be that space. That was the bit that people really engaged with. And this is why it's a two-part telecall this time to really allow people to choose how to use this tool in a way that works for them. So, yeah. And That's you get a little space in between, which I love. So it's like yeah. 
July 23rd and then July 30th. Yeah, so it gives you like a week to practice because, I mean, um, the tool is use this for three days and then you break the, who does it belong to? And we turn everywhere it's not yours with consciousness attached, right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, on, nine, spies, me, ons. And if you do that for three days, so that means every thought, every feeling, every emotion and every body sensation, return to center with consciousness, everything that isn't mine, then you begin to acknowledge what is yours. So that means when you actually require to go to the toilet and say, I need a wee, truth, is it mine? Yeah. Oh, it's not mine. I do a body, do we require to go? No, okay, right, fine. So you're really asking your body I mean, to. Even when you want to yeah. eat, you're hungry. Yeah. I did that one with surprise. I was like, oh. <laughs> is it mine? Or like you have a random thought coming in your world about, you know, I'll get fat if I eat this. Is this mine? Oh my God. So, so much. Well, and, you know, even showering and using soap and like asking your body, do you want to wash your hair? You know, truth is, is this mine? Is this my point of view? No return to senders. And like really being present with your everyday life for three days, asking this question with everything that comes up. And for me, the itching, because I sometimes get really itchy, I'm like, oh, is this mine? No. But my body is trying to give me information. So I'm aware of someone else's. What space can I be to be ease with this awareness is a really good question. I love that. I love yeah. that. I'm excited. Well, thank you so much, Vicky, for asking for this. Yeah, no, thank you for coming on for the, um, just uh, everything that just went. Whoo. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I love it. And we'll put the link, I'm sure, if they already have it in here to the class. So you yep. can check it out. And, um, and for those who wanted to share the video, it will be on my page. And all okay. of this information, you just share it. Yeah. yeah. Share yeah. it on Facebook. I dare you. I dare you. Because there's some pretty good tools in here, too. I mean, we'd love to see you on the class, but if we don't see you there, we'll see you somewhere soon. Yeah, totally. All Thank right. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for coming on and engaging, and uh, have a great day. Yeah. Bye, everybody. And keep using the tool.